I'm really struggling with this, aren't I? They packed so much into three and a half minutes. That's one of the most powerful things I've watched in my life. And on and on we'll go. Hi there, Jeremy here from veganinteractions.com. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to react as well as do a detailed analysis to the new viral sensation, Save Ralph. Now, I've only recently heard about this video, but it's amassed nearly 3 million views within the first week. So let's watch it and see what it's all about. If you want to jump straight to my thoughts on the video, as well as my detailed analysis, I'll put the timestamp in the description so you can jump straight to it. With that, let's watch Save Ralph together. Ready? We rolling. Okay, Ralph, can you mark it, please? Do you want me to click it now? Yep, go for it. Go on. Like that? Brilliant. Oh, it's like in the movies. Alrighty, so, um, my name's Ralph. Um, I'm a rabbit, as you can see. I'm blind in my right eye, and, uh, this ear. Can't hear nothing but ringing now. Eee! Yeah, it's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. So I had my fur shaved and got chemical burns up and down my back. Kind of stings, eh? But it's not a big deal. I mean, it only really hurts when I, like, breathe or move around or whatever. Ah, yeah. Ow. Yeah, that hurts. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, it's OK. We do it for the humans, right? They're far superior to us animals. They've even been to space. Have you ever seen a rabbit in a rocket ship? Oh, I don't think so. Point is, I'm not a space bunny. I'm a tester. My daddy was a tester, my mum, my brothers, my sisters, my kids, all testers. And they all died doing their job. Just like I will. But it's okay. Testing is what we were born to do. It makes us rabbits happy. Yeah. Gotta get to work. Now I know it looks bad, but the way I see it, I'm doing my job. If just one human can have the illusion of a safer lipstick or deodorant or... Uh... Hey, Ralphie! Psst. Ralphie! What's with the camera crew, bro? Ah, oh, um, <laughs> they're just following me around, making a documentary or something. <gasps> can you ask them to get us out of here? Yeah. What, what, what will we see? Come on, Ralphie, just I'm ask really me to get out of here. I don't want to die, man. Help! Okay, Ralphie! Okay, I hear you. You can, uh, you can edit that out, right? Oh, here we go. Hey, hey, hey! Don't touch uh, Ralphie! Oh, 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 shit! <sighs> so, uh, so in closing, I'd, um, I'd just like to say that... Um, Sorry, Ralph. Uh, We're over here. Can you can you turn around? Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, is this better? Yeah. Yeah. Carry on, mate. Okay. So yeah, I'd just like to say to everyone out there still buying animal-tested cosmetics like eyeliner, shampoo, sunscreen, pretty much everything in your bathroom. Well, without you and countries that allow animal testing, I'd be out of a job. I'd be on the streets. Well, not the streets, more like a field, I guess. You know, like a normal rabbit. But hey. It's all good. That was something else, wasn't it? Um, for those of you who that was your first time watching this, um, yeah, you may like to just take a minute to process it before I kind of go into sharing my thoughts on it. Um, 
yeah, I don't know about for you, but for me, that was one of those powerful um, animal centric videos that's been put out in recent history. Um, so yeah, I might just take a moment and then I'll come back and, and share some of my detailed thoughts on, on what I think I, they did well and, and also maybe some observations. So starting from the beginning, let's look, look at that opening and then see what jumps out at us. Okay, Ralph, can you mark it, please? Do you want me to click it now? Yep, go for it. Go on. Like that? Brilliant. Oh, it's like in the movies. Now for a short film, only three and a half minutes, I think they do an excellent job with immediately um, establishing a connection with the main character, Ralph. And it's also interesting, the narration of the film director, almost as this impartial observer, and kind of represents for Ralph and for a lot of our fellow animals who are bred, used, or killed, maybe the first time someone's hearing their story. As oftentimes our fellow animals' experiences are so far removed from our own that we don't even see them, let alone think about them. We'll see this voice come back in later at a critical point. I also thought they did a good job introducing humor when it was appropriate, but uh, not too much. An example of the humor that they inject is um, when Ralph's going through his injuries and talking about the humming in his ear. And when he's talking about this, they do it in a way that's um, a bit comical when he says, annoying, isn't it? I'm blind in my right eye and uh, this ear. Can't hear nothing but ringing now. Eee. Yeah, it's annoying, isn't it? Yeah which I think is a really creative way to invite the viewer to ponder a serious moral topic. Now the next bit to me was key because I'm so glad that they struck at really the heart of the matter, which is uh, human supremacy. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, it's okay. We do it for the humans, right? They're far superior to us animals. They've even been to space. Have you ever seen a rabbit in a rocket ship? Oh, I don't think so. And I think they do this in a super clever way because they basically present the same arguments that animal advocates often hear. You know, basically saying that humans are superior and then they give the example of, you know, rabbits haven't been into space, so surely humans are superior to rabbits. And whether it's going into space or any human-centric ability, does that really impact on our moral value? So I think the video creators did a great job to broach this subject in a very digestible and approachable way while still helping to dismantle it at the same time. In the next scene where Ralph's eating um, breakfast, um, I think that's also a critical point to me too because he starts talking about his family members and how they were all testers, which I think is a clever way to talk about the breeding side of things, um, which I'll share some more thoughts on that later on. My daddy was a tester, my mum, my brothers, my sisters, my kids, all testers, and they all died doing their job. Just like I will. But it's okay. Testing is what we were born to do. Another important thing about this section is how they talk about a rabbit's purpose to be tested on versus living in their own right. Which begs the question, are our fellow animals here for us or with us? Towards the end of um, Ralph eating breakfast is probably the most powerful scene in the whole video. Let's watch it again and see if you can see why I'm thinking that. It makes us rabbits happy. Yeah. Did you see it this time? I'll confess, I didn't see it the first time I watched it, but you can actually see a tear rolling down Ralph's cheek. This is so key to me because I think oftentimes as humans, we think our fellow animals aren't capable of doing the same things we are. This is such a powerful way to start to see Ralph as the individual who he is, who among other things is capable of experiencing life, which includes showing emotion, as well as the awareness of his situation. This next scene is key because it has a pivotal shift from the calm, serene environment of Ralph's home, where we're getting to know him, to all of a sudden a hand coming in through the roof, ripping him out of that environment and throwing him into the laboratory setting. Oh, time to get to work. I thought this was another example of the super creative nature of this piece, because it really invites the watcher to consider things from the victim's perspective which I think is a crucial piece of taking the message of animal rights seriously. Because it's not about us, it's about them. 
I just think this is so clever because I think what we're experiencing watching this and that confusion of what's happening now is probably very similar to the um, confusion and the, the, the fear and anxiety that our fellow animals like Ralph experience when they're in a similar situation in a laboratory or otherwise. This next scene is where the video gets much more confronting and Ralph's placed in this glass box where he can't move around or escape. It's also significant because for the first time, this focus on the individual, which I think is so powerful, for a moment we take a step back and look at all the other unique individuals who are also impacted by animal testing and animal use in general. Psst, Ralphie, what's with the camera crew, bro? Oh, um, <laughs> they just follow me around. We also get to hear what some of our fellow animals who are in this situation may be thinking or saying. Making a documentary or something. <gasps> Can you ask them to get us out of here? Yeah. Yeah, what, what, what will we see? Come on, Ralphie, just I'm ask really me to get out of here. I don't want to die, man. Help! Okay, Ralphie! Which again is, I think, what makes this such a powerful piece because we're really invited to consider things from the victim's perspective. Towards the end of this clip, it's interesting how Ralph says, you can edit this out, right? Ralphie! <laughs> okay, I hear you. You can, uh, you can edit that out, right? Which I think is a subtle yet thought-provoking way to think that, in a way, we edit out what our fellow animals might be thinking in these situations. I also really like here how the creators present one of the common defenses to um, uh, so-called animal testing by saying as long as it makes humans feel a little, little bit safer about their cosmetics, it's worth it, which is obviously ridiculous. If just one human can have the illusion of a safer lipstick or deodorant... And for the viewers, if they haven't been moved up until this point, if the closing scene didn't invite them to take this matter more seriously, it's likely nothing would. I thought this scene was really compelling because it shows that it's not just the um, so-called testing that's traumatic, it's also the aftermath and every moment of their lives. This is portrayed through the video where Ralph doesn't know which way the camera is because he's completely lost his vision. You can also see the raw flesh on his back, which really helps to underscore the severity of the situation. So, uh, so in closing, I'd, um, I'd just like to say that... Um, Sorry, Ralph. Uh, We're over here. Can you... Can you turn around? Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, is this better? Yeah. Yeah. Carry on, mate. Taking a bit of a step back, I just think it's so crucial that this video came out because I think the animal movement has largely forgot about the breeding, use, and killing that happens through so-called animal testing. Okay, so, yeah. I'd just like to say to everyone out there still buying animal-tested cosmetics like eyeliner, shampoo, sunscreen, pretty much everything in your bathroom. Now the focus here was a bit more narrow towards cosmetics, because obviously the um, so-called testing happens for a whole lot of other purposes. Well, without you and countries that allow animal testing, I'd be out of a job. I also think this bit's a bit challenging because I think there's some, not necessarily the video itself, but I think there's a potential for people to extrapolate this in a way that is quite racist, saying this country tests, whereas this country doesn't. When the reality is, these companies who do this testing are choosing to market to those countries. If they're really ethical and opposed to animal testing, they wouldn't do it. They do it because they want the business, not because some country's making them. Now this next part I think is a bit interesting how Ralph's talking about living like a normal rabbit in a field. I'd be out of a job. I'd be on the streets. Well, not the streets, more like a field, I guess. You know, like a normal rabbit. I think the real question is stopping the breeding in the first place. Because the Ralphs of the world who are being tested on shouldn't be bred for our purposes, full stop. They're not free-living rabbits that are being taken out of nature to be tested on, although I wouldn't be at all surprised if that happens too. But for the vast majority of cases, it's not a matter of releasing the rabbits into the field, it's a matter of stopping the creation of their lives in the first place and preventing the breeding. For the sole purpose that it's a net negative life for individuals like Ralph to be bred into existence for the sole purpose of being tested on and then murdered. There's also several moments throughout this entire video, but especially closing scenes where Ralph's trying to present this good face and saying, you know, it's all good when it's really not because you can see his uh, micro expressions and every once in a while he winces in pain, which I don't know if the creators were trying to do this, but I like to think of this as Ralph embodying almost like the internal moral questions that uh, we ask ourselves, where we're trying to say it's all good, where there's this little wincing and we can't help but thinking about the fellow animals, who for them, it's not all good. But hey. It's 
so good. Now, for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, you know I'm big on language. So let's take a look at this closing message. No animal should suffer or die in the name of beauty. Now, the one thing I think this message has going for it is it's clear and hopefully easy to interpret. The question I would ask is what is the range of potential interpretations? Because I like to think about what's the worst case scenario that a non-vegan might think of in trying to limit the risk of them misinterpreting our message. For instance, what's this about suffering? To me, that's an animal welfare claim because it doesn't matter how much they suffer. The fact is that it's wrong to breed, use, or kill them in the first place. So even if you remove the suffering, it's still wrong. Now as animal advocates, we might say, of course it's suffering, it's all suffering. However, do non-vegans think this? Plus, from an animal welfare perspective, we have animal groups as well as the businesses themselves selling these high welfare type alternatives. We've all heard it before. And for those of you who've read um, Rain Without Thunder, there's some specific examples in there from the animal testing side of things where you can barely tell the difference between an animal advocate and an animal user. They're both saying, let's end the suffering. We need to differentiate ourselves from this message. Now, as far as death, I do think this is a key message. However, I think we should only really talk about the right to life and the killing or murder when it comes to free living beings. Because as I kind of gestured at earlier, the problem isn't so much that they're dying, which is a pretty neutral term to begin with. They're not dying, they're being murdered. The problem is they're being bred in the first place. Then it doesn't matter whether or not they suffer or not, or whether or not they die, we're not breeding them into this net negative life in the first place. Now the end of the message, in the name of beauty, this video obviously has a very key focus, which I think might be strategic to get people on board for this and then move them towards other things. However, I don't see why to reduce the scope because it's not like there's a moral justification for our fellow animals suffering or dying at our hands anyway. Now for my Facebook videos, I oftentimes say the message, all animals are unique individuals who are worthy of respect, which means not breeding, using, or killing them. Now something quite similar to what they did at the end of this video that's a bit shorter, I might have said no one should be bred for the purposes of being used and killed. Because I think when we say animal and we don't get the context around that, it may help to reinforce this human-animal divide as it were, and reinforce this myth that humans aren't animals. I also just wanted to highlight real quick that videos that do well like this offer a great opportunity for all of us to build respect for our fellow animals. One quick and easy way to do this is by leaving a comment on the videos. You can create your own comment, or in videos like this with thousands of comments already, it may be a better strategy to reply to a comment that already has a lot of likes, however, it doesn't have that many responses. This is likely to be seen by more people. One good thing about YouTube's comment algorithm is that it ranks comments between both the most liked as well as the most recent, so a mix of these two strategies might work well. This only takes a minute or two and you never know how many non-vegans might see it. It may get them seriously thinking about respecting our fellow animals through veganism. Now for more ideas for animal advocates to respond to um, people who support animal testing, I encourage you to check out my discussion guide, which I've just added a new section to um, specifically to address this point. And I also list some of the stats as well as some alternatives to testing on our fellow animals, such as using um, human cadavers, as well as uh, computer modeling and 3D printing. Ending experiments on animals isn't rocket science, it's just good science. We'll all benefit from that. So I hope I did a fair job of capturing the key elements of this video, but I'm really curious to hear what you thought of it. So please let me know in the comments what you thought of Save Ralph. And I would encourage all animal advocates to save this on, the, on a YouTube playlist so that anytime a non-vegan comes to you promoting animal testing, you can share this video with them. As always, thanks for all the liking, commenting, subscribing, and especially sharing this link with a fellow animal advocate or someone who's vegan curious, because that's really the only way these videos are gonna get out there. Yeah, thanks anti-vegan YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you in my next video this Friday at 6 p.m. UK time, where I'll be doing a live discussion, or some might say debate, with someone who isn't vegan who runs the YouTube channel, Vegan Vacancy. It's bound to be a thought-provoking dialogue, so I look forward to seeing you there. And thank you for all you do to build respect for our fellow animals. For free resources, such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.